So for lessons three through eight, you're going to need 10 of these weights. Um, and these are gonna be used in all of the structural tests for your design challenges. So each group during their um, designing process is gonna need two bags. So this is something that the students can help you prep ahead of time. So again, just make sure you have 10 of these before lesson three and you'll use them throughout the unit. Um, they're really easy to make. Take a sandwich bag, a half cup of sand, and make sure that they are measuring a half cup so that each group has uniform weights just to keep the tests fair. Roll them out, get out as much of the excess air as you can. Seal it. And then tape it up. So again, you just have these kind of sausage shaped weights and this is what we're gonna place on top of the structures when we test them. Um, for the younger classes, you'll probably only use one weight. For the other classes, um, if you're having multiple tests, you can actually increase it. So if everyone's tower worked really well with um, one weight, you can make the new test that they have to survive with two weights and you could add a third. So it's something really quick and easy to make so that you can modify your tests if you want to. So the first engineering design challenge that they're going to do in teams is one that we do a lot in our lesson plans. So that's totally fine. Um, we're going to do it more intentionally this time. They're going to build a tower out of spaghetti or any kind of long pasta like linguine or fettuccine and marshmallows. So they could have a big handful of jumbo marshmallows and then a big handful of the little mini marshmallows. And um, they should be pretty fresh. Um, and they'll be harder to work with when they're fresh, but that's actually what we want. And so we haven't done materials analysis yet, so you don't have to use very specific words, but you can just ask them, what do you notice about spaghetti? So Leslie, what do you notice about spaghetti? How would you describe it in terms of like, is it strong or is it weak? Looks pretty weak. Looks pretty weak, like I could oh. oops, break it pretty easily. Brittle. Also, you know, they should be wearing goggles during all of the engineering design challenges. Um, is it flexible? <laughs> It looks brittle. It's brittle. It, it is pretty. It is best. brittle. Like it's it's flexible to a point, and then it just cracks really easily. So it's pretty brittle. This isn't like the best spaghetti, but it, whatever you get, it's totally fine. Um, and then how would you describe marshmallows? Soft. Soft. Squishy. squishy. If they're just using those words for now, that's totally fine. Um, they should remember from yesterday. What's it called when I press down like this, or when I squeeze it? Compression. So that's compression. So if they can remember those vocab words, that's great. Um, and even though you can't really see it, I'm pulling on either end of this spaghetti. What do you call that? Tension. Tension. Okay. And we'll leave it at that. Their constraints for this challenge are to make it at least 30 centimeters tall, which is about the length of um, this ruler or 12 inches. And then it's going to have to hold, at least at first, and you can add more weights as you go, it's going to have to hold uh, one of these weights. And if all the groups go and they're really successful with one weight, you could keep on adding more weights. So you could do the same test with two weights and three weights. So really, all the materials you're getting are really weak materials. So they're going to have to think about how to make them stronger. Um, Leslie, from yesterday or from the last lesson, what's the strongest kind of shape? Triangles. Okay, um, so are we just gonna make a big triangle, like a pyramid of uh, spaghetti? You could try that. You can try that, but what might be the problem? Like, why don't we just all live in pyramids at this point in the world? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, give, give it a guess. I mean, we know that pyramids or triangles are the strongest shape, and when we did the strong shapes demo, the pyramid that we built was actually the, the strongest shape. It was the most stable when you did that 
top-down pressure, but why don't we all just live in pyramids? We like squares better. I mean, what might be a problem with this shape if you're building a whole city out of just pyramids? Very practical? No. And oh, how no, no, tall? no, it takes too much space. It takes a lot of space. You can't really use the space up here. You can use the space up here, but can you build up? No. That's Not really. as far as you can go. So that's why a lot of times we pretty much see rectangular buildings that go up, especially for tall towers. So those aren't triangles, they're rectangles. How do we add triangles to them? Cross bracing or bracing? Yes, with braces and cross braces. And so you're going to form these little triangle shapes all the way up. Okay, and add those in as much as you can. Um, then you can stop the questions right there and then just have the let the kids just design and, and think up their own ideas. Um, and then see where they're at in about 10-15 minutes. Circulate and ask guiding questions as you go. Um, and then you're going to have the actual test at the end and we'll show you how to do that. But first we'll do a kind of a demo of one of the, the models. Okay, so this is our final tower. It reaches over, we had to add a little marshmallow hat there, but it reaches over 30 centimeters. Um, it seems pretty stable if you touch it at the side. It doesn't move too much. You press down from the top, directly in the center. It doesn't wobble too much. We haven't actually tried to put the weight on it at all, but we will. Um, Leslie, how did we make the very weak materials stronger. What techniques did we use? We used um, the bars, cross bars? The cross braces? Cross braces, sorry, cross so braces. So we used, um, here's one set of cross braces on the first level and then the second level. And then we also used it at the very top in the center. There's a cross brace. You know, if we had more time, we would probably cross brace at each level too, which we could do later if we wanted to. Um, how else did we make it stronger? What did we, we do to these parts, the four corners? We doubled them. So in the four corners, we did double it up. And in the bottom, um, the bottom rungs too, they, we doubled up the spaghetti to make it stronger. Uh, we tried to keep it as symmetrical as possible. Um, and how did we use the marshmallows? We used them in a very specific way. I mean, we used them to like, as connectors, so they're actually connecting things together. But for the most part, for this long piece right there, is this one long piece or are they two long pieces stuck together? They're okay. two. So how we used it, um, and the students might figure this part out as well, is because marshmallows aren't, I mean, they're really soft and, and squishy, it's stronger if you kind of push the spaghetti all the way through. So they're If you only push it in halfway, that's not as strong um, of a joint as you'd want. So even on the side joints, we actually push the pieces of spaghetti all the way through and kind of just let them hang over rather than stopping halfway. And that's another way, if they think about it, they can reinforce their structure. So the test for this time around is um, just the weight or the load, because they're going to have to think about loads when they're building their designs. So here's the first load. This is just the 115 grams. Oh, I can feel the compression already. So it is sinking a little bit under the weight. Um, and we could time it 10 seconds. You could use your timer. So, um, you know, the younger kids, you might only be doing the, the one weight. But I think for the older grade levels, you can actually just keep on stacking on the weights. And as a whole class, you already have 10 of these weights. So you can just keep on going. And, you know, the group that can hold the most weights for 10 second intervals wins. So I'm just going to put this one on. So ours only survives two, but again, um, have about 10 of these weights around and the group that has the most wins. And that's it.